in this session we would be dealing with the preparation of three column cash book we we just learned that three column cash book is one of the subsidiary cash books and we would be learning how to go about passing the entries in the case of three column cash book and we have a question over here the question goes like this enter the following transactions in three column cash book of mr xyz for jan 2020 and then they have given us around nine transactions let us go about with the entry of these transactions into the three column cash book okay now let's look at the question together uh, uh, before we start of solving the question uh, let us look at the uh, three column cash book format we have uh, debit side we have credit side uh, both the sides are symmetrical in nature we have discount cash bank here also we have discount cash bank now because i have a small space constraint i have not shown the voucher number column and the ledger folio column but please remember uh, at least uh, when we are preparing numericals uh, we would not be using these ex uh, extensively that's the reason why i have not uh, has shown them because i have a space constraint uh, because of which i have not shown that over here but we are here also we will be having the columns for uh, recording the voucher numbers as well as the receipt numbers and the ledger folio numbers okay now let's start off with a transaction please remember we are we are preparing uh, this three column cash book in the books of accounts of mr abc and in the books of mr abc we are preparing the transactions for jan 2020 now let's start off with a transaction let's look at the transaction on jan 1st it says cash in hand rupees 15000 and at bank rupees 10000 what does this mean on jan 1st you're bringing down the previous month's balance on jan 1st you're bringing down the previous month's balance so how do we go about recording we would go about recording this by starting off with two two balance bd what does bd mean bd means brought down to balance brought down and in cash column we will be recording 15000 bank column we will be recording 10000 okay in cash column we will be recording 15000 and in bank column we will be recording 10000 now so we've got that transaction straight forward now let's look at the next transaction jan second bought machinery for cash rupees 2000 what is happening on 2nd of jan on 2nd of jan what is happening is you're buying some machinery but how are you making the payment you're making the payment with the help of cash since you're helping since you're carrying out the payment with the help of cash the money would be going out from your cash column okay please remember the money would be going out from your cash column also uh, uh, remember cash column is real in nature golden rule tells us debit what comes in credit what goes out so cash is going up since this is on the credit side you will start off with buy so buy machinery account and the amount is 2000 this will get recorded in the cash call okay this will get recorded in the cash call so we've done with the transaction on jan second now let's look at the next transaction jan 3 bought furniture so jan 3 bought furniture and issued a check so on 3rd of jan you are you are carrying out the purchase of some furniture but this furniture payment how are you making you are making the payment with the help of check so on on 3rd of jan you are buying some furniture but the furniture payment you are making with the help of check so remember whenever we carry out a check payment the money has to go out from your bank column okay please remember whenever you carry out a check payment the money will have to go out from your bank column and we are issuing the check on jan 3rd so here what will happen is buy furniture account and the amount is 3000 and that is going out from your bank Uh, sorry this the amount was 4000 and the amount is going directly from your bank call okay, so this is how we would be going out with the in the case of check payments uh, the check payments uh, in the case of three column cash book now let's look at the next one 
Jan 4th. Jan 4th, what is happening is uh, sold goods for cash. Jan 4th, sold goods for cash. So on, on 4th of Jan, what is happening is you're selling goods and you're receiving cash. So here, what will happen is Jan, Jan 4th, two sales. Okay, two sales. But remember, in this case, how exactly are you getting the payment? You're getting the payment in the form of cash. Since you're getting the payment in the form of cash, this transaction will be recorded in the cash column. Okay, this transaction would be recorded in the cash column. So it's two sales, 2,000. 500. Now let's look at the transaction on Jan 5th. Okay, Jan 5th paid Diana rupees 1000 in full settlement of 1100 by check. So here, please remember Diana, you were supposed to pay 1100. But instead of paying Diana 1100, how much are we paying? We are paying Diana only 1000 rupees, which means we are getting a discount of 100 rupees. Also, remember here, how exactly are we carrying out the transaction? We are carrying out the transaction with the help of checks. So here, what will happen is, by Diana account, discount column, it is 100. Bank column, it is 1,000. Discount column, it is 100. And bank column, it is 1,000. Now let's look at the next one, Jan 6th, okay, Jan 6th, uh, deposited cash into bank, okay, deposited cash into bank. Now this will be a very interesting question because, uh, this will be a very interesting transaction because here we will have to pass what is called as the contra entry. So on Jan 6th, we will have to pass what is called as contra entries. So please remember what are contra entries. Contra entries are those entries which would be featuring on both the debit side as well as credit side in your three column cash book on the same day. Okay, so for, or for the same date, you would be having a both a debit entry as well as credit entry and these would be reflecting on both the sides. Now let's try and break down this transaction. What is a transaction? You're depositing cash. Where are you depositing cash? You're depositing the cash into bank. But for you to deposit cash into bank, what is the source? The source is your office. The source is your cash box in your office. So cash is going out from your office and it is going into your bank account. So here, what will happen is Jan 6th. Okay? Jan 6th, remember, cash is going out. Where is cash going out? Cash is going out into your bank. So buy bank account. Okay? Buy bank account. The amount is 1,500. Remember, cash column is real in nature. Golden rule tells us debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Cash is going out. So you are crediting your cash. You are crediting your cash column. Okay, since cash is going out, you're crediting your cash column. Okay? Now, where is the cash going into? The cash is being deposited into your bank. Remember, bank is what type? Personal. Golden rule tells us debit to receiver. So here, bank is receiving. So here, it will be to cash account. Okay? And bank is receiving. So 1000 500. Okay. Now, if you would notice, here we are having transactions featuring on both the sides. You have a transaction on credit side and then you have a transaction on the debit side and it is for the same date, which is Jan 6th. Okay. So, this is the contra entry. Contra entries are denoted with the letter C in the ledger folio column. Okay. I'll repeat that. Contra entries are denoted with the letter C in the ledger folio columns. So here we have a contra entry and what the, well, the transaction was, we took some cash from our office, went to the bank, deposited. For this transaction, we are having entries featuring on both the sides, debit as well as credit side. Such kind of entries are called as contra entries.
okay such kind of entries are called as contra entries okay so let's and remember contra entries are always denoted with letter c okay contra entries are always denoted with letter c now let's look at the next one withdrew by check for personal use so jan 7th you're withdrawing money but what are you withdrawing money for you're withdrawing money for personal use we are already familiar with the fact that whenever we withdraw money for personal use what is that called as that is called as drawings so here by drawings okay here it is by drawings okay why because you're taking money out for your personal use but where exactly are you taking the money out from you're taking the money out with the help of check which means the cash would be going out from your bank account okay the cash would be going out from your bank account so by drawings and the amount is 1500 okay so the amount is 1500 so by drawings account and the amount is 1500 jan 7th by drawings the amount is 1500 Okay, so by drawings account withdrew for personal use thousand five hundred. Next one, Jan eight, withdrew from bank for office use. Okay, withdrew from bank for office use. So what is happening here on on eighth of Jan? You are walking into the bank. You are withdrawing some money. But for what purpose are you withdrawing the money? You're withdrawing the money for the need at your office. So, which means you're going to the bank, withdrawing money from there, and the cash is coming into your business. So, this is again, or this would be a contra entry. So, how would this be a contra entry? Because for this transaction also, we would be having entries that would be featuring on both the sides of the three-column cash book. Now, let's try and break this down. Uh, into two parts withdrew from bank which means you're walking into the bank so on jan 8th you're walking into the bank and you're withdrawing money okay so by what are you withdrawing you're withdrawing cash so by cash account now remember bank column is what type it is personal golden rule debit the receiver credit the giver when you withdraw cash from bank is bank receiving or bank giving bank would be giving and to withdrawing 2000 rupees over here okay you are you are withdrawing 2000 rupees so 2000 rupees has gone out from your bank account okay 2000 rupees has gone out from your bank account then jan 8 now when you withdrew money from your bank account what happened to that cash cash has come into your business remember cash is what type it is real in nature golden rule tells you debit the receiver uh, debit what comes in credit what goes out for real account the golden rule is debit what comes in credit what goes out so to bank account and the amount is 2000 okay why because cash column is real and golden rule tells you debit what comes in credit what goes up okay debit what comes in credit what goes up so this is an entry which is featuring on both the sides of your three column cash book this has to be a contra entry so on jan 8th we are having two entries and these entries are showing up on debit as well as credit remember contra entries how do we denote we denote contra entries with a letter c Okay, contra entries we denote with the letter c so we are done with the transaction on 8th of jan okay we are done with the transaction on 8th of jan and we have one more transaction to go which is on jan 9th okay which we have one more transaction to complete which is on jan 9th so jan 9th the transaction is paid rent by check so by rent account since the payment is made with the help of check the amount would be going out from bank column and then here it will be 3000 okay so here it will be 3000 now that we are done with the entries let's go about balancing the uh, balancing the accounts now one very important thing that you have to remember is please remember discount column is a memorandum column so which means you need not balance the discount column 
okay you need not balance the discount column but you have to balance cash as well as back okay so discount here we have 100 now let's try and balance um, here cash column de debit side here we don't have any amount in discount column uh, cash column here the amount is 19500 okay which means credit side should also be 19500 but is the total on cash column equal to 19500 no it is not equal to 19500 instead uh, it, it is only uh, 3500 so from 3500 if it has to be 19500 how much more do you need you need another uh, you need another uh, 16000 more so what is 16000 please remember 16000 is your balancing figure 16,000 is now one important thing that you have to remember is this is the balancing figure for a uh, cash call. It, it, it is the balancing figure for the cash call. Now let's look at the bank call. So bank column here, the total is 11,500. Here, let us total this up. This will be five, 6,500, 6, 8,500, 11,500. So in the case of bank column, what has happened is debit side is equal to credit side. Okay, debit side is equal to uh, credit side. So here it is, you don't need to back uh, because since it is equal, we will not be having any balancing figure for bank call. So let us complete this by balance, carry down, 1st of February, it will be two balance brought down cash column it is 16000 bank column it is zero so the, we have we've successfully completed the three column cash book now in this three column cash book some aspects that you have to remember is uh, with respect to contra entries what are contra entries contra entries are those entries which are featuring on both the side that is debit side and credit side of a three column cash book uh, and it would be featuring for the same date so only if the transaction is reflecting for the same date on both debit and credit that is when you would call this as contra entries contra entries are denoted with a letter c the contra entries is denoted with the letter C. I will also give you one more uh, heads up. Uh, contra entries you can have only in two scenarios. First scenario is withdrew cash from bank for office use. Second is deposited cash into bank. So these are the two scenarios where you will be having contra entries. Also, once you prepare triple column cash book, uh, you will have to balance cash as well as bank column and uh, it could so happen that uh, it, it could be that you may have a debt, uh, you, you balancing figure uh, for one column, it feature on debit side, for the other column, it may feature on credit side. So those kind of scenarios are also quite possible in the, in the case of three column cash flow. So here for this particular question, we have completed the preparation of three column cash flow.